What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with Margarita of Edge of Paradise. Thank you so much for your time today. It's uh, great to have you here. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. You've been requested a small handful of times, actually, on uh, our YouTube channel. So it's uh, great to finally make this happen. Oh, well, that's good to hear. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's awesome to have you here. So it last time, um, you know, when, you know, it was really cool to be able to, you know, listen to the last album, Universe. It was really, really a good album and, you know, a great album to listen to to remember better days before uh, the wrath of 2020. Um, but I know that you are currently working on some new stuff now. Was Universe maybe a good representation of the direction that Edge of Paradise is going into? Yeah, the new album we actually recently, a few days ago, I just finished the last file for tracking. So it's now in Denmark for mixing with Jake. This is definitely our best album to date. And it's kind of, it's, you know, Universe in a way was the album that kind of defined our sound. So this one is just building on that and it's much more cinematic, it's a little more heavier, the songs are more powerful. Overall, it's kind of like a bigger universe. You know? Yeah. So we're, plus we have a great production team. And so you mentioned that you kind of like redefined uh, Edge of Paradise's sound with Universe. So w would you say that maybe the albums previously, such as the Alive EP or Immortal Watts or Mask, etc., was still kind of like experiment experimenting with your sound in a way? Yeah, um, like, I think like Immortal Waltz, we were still kind of finding what we wanted to sound like. With Alive, we started to get on the right track because <laughs> um, we were moving more into like the industrial heavy sound. Um, so yeah, I would say Alive is definitely the EP that kind of turned us onto the right path where we want it to be. <laughs> that, but that, the like, Mask album, for example, sounds nothing like us. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, it, it seems like you brought in elements of like symphonic metal, some rock, as well as like some industrial. So experimenting with your sound is something that you've always, is something that Edge of Paradise has always wanted to do, right? And like, you know, when we set out to write an album or, you know, any song, we never really have like a preconceived notion of what we wanted it to be. Um, you know, we just kind of have an idea and evolve it to how we like it. And the song sort of leads the way. And then over time, I think, you know, we definitely evolved as songwriters too. So um, it was like a natural progression, but definitely didn't force anything that makes sense, you know? Yeah. So it's not like you really uh, enter something with like a preconceived idea, right? It's like uh, there's always like a lot of organic trial and error involved. Yeah. And, you know, once you find the sound you like, you definitely feel it and you kind of stay on that path. So, uh, you know, then that's what we've done. And also, you know, it's hard these days because there's a lot of trends and, you know, um, sometimes you might want to, you know, find an easier path and chase a trend, but those never last. So we always kind of just try to stick to what we really, you know, liked and believed in and see where that evolves. Mm -hmm. well, so having members come into Edge of Paradise has been able to kind of like enhance your sound a little bit, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, still like Dave and I pretty much are behind the music. Um, you know, Jamie, he definitely like brought the energy because it's it's so hard to find the right drama for the song. And when we found Jamie to join the band, we knew he was the right drummer because he listened to the song. Because, you know, sometimes um, the, the difficult thing with the band is to make sure that musicians really play for the song instead of playing for the instrument, if that makes any sense. Yeah, definitely. So and we are lucky to have them because, you know, he's able to recognize, um, you know, the right groove and... And, you know, when we have so many people involved now in the production, um, it was really funny when he was recording this new album. We had Neil, who is a drummer for Three Days Grace. We had Joe Ricard, who, is a, who was a drummer for In Flames. And, um, you know, now he's doing more 
a lot of producing, but he's still a great drummer. He actually played on our Universe album. And then, um, you know, we have Jamie. So we, ha- and then we had Mike Plotnikov. So we had two drummers and producer and then us telling Jamie what to do. <laughs> so I was pretty nervous how he's going to take it because it's hard to have your own idea then, you know, have the band's idea and then have all these outside drummers and the producers kind of throwing stuff at you. But he handled it really well and the songs came out great. So it's, it's a talent in itself. <laughs> that it's, and to be able to get that much input and take all of it, uh, yeah. poor Jamie. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was sweating a couple of times, but it all worked out. <laughs> now, uh, recently you collaborated on Magnus Carlson's Heart Healer album, which was I just want to say that that was like one of the best uh, compilation albums I've ever heard. Like to be on an al- working with Magnus Carlson as well as singing with a lot of other great singers such as Adrian of Seven Spires and Nor from Battle Beast and and uh, Annette formerly at Nightwish and now of the Dark Element. Did that also maybe teach you some new things to apply to Edge of Paradise as well? Um, I wouldn't like it was. The album is amazing, and I love how epic it sounds, and it's so cool that we are all kind of on it, and we're all across the world. But the way, like, I was approached, like, Magnus sent me the songs, and I instantly liked them. Um, but I never, I didn't, I don't think any of us really knew what it was going to be at the end, because we're kind of singing our own parts. And then, like, I just heard the complete tracks. Um, you know, after everything's done. So when, you know, my involvement in it was not as great as like seeing the whole project develop, if you know what I mean. So it was more like a really cool project that I was really honored to be a part of. And I love the idea of a metal opera, but it's still very different from, you know, what we do with Edge of Paradise. So um, it was... It was really cool to, you know, to kind of see what that evolved into. So, mm-hmm. did uh, did you almost kind of was it like a completely? So it was a clearly different creative process. And did you almost feel like that maybe you had to adjust how you sing in a way to kind of fit the song, or maybe like uh, kind of find aspects of yourself that maybe you haven't discovered yet in a way? Yeah, you know, when I first learned about it what made me nervous is the metal opera the opera part of it (laughs) because if you know like you know bands like Nightwish um, they have that operatic element in their music and we don't really like I don't sing in that style at all so it kind of crossed my mind like you know are they expecting me to sing like more classical or but then you know I heard the songs and then I heard how, like, Nora, for example, she also approaches it with more of a, like, power, um, power voice, you know? So I kind of, and I recorded it at this mic studio where I record, you know, vocals. So I was really, you know, I'm really comfortable in that studio. So I think I just did my own thing. And um, I think that's what Magnus wanted me to do anyway. So, yeah, it was um, once I started singing the songs, it was pretty natural for me because the music kind of led the way. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, because on top of that, there was a couple of tracks where, like, you, you were singing with multiple singers as well. And, yeah. and But it was impressive. I was able to tell that, okay, that's Margarita, that's Adrian of Seven Spires, that's uh, Annette. Like, so it was cool that everybody was able to kind of take the spotlight for it as well. Yeah, uh, and, you know, it's so... Like, it takes a lot of um, thought to be able to put all the singers together to make sure the song comes out, um, you know, in a way that's all, you know, fits together. It's coherent. So it was, you know, it's pretty awesome how it turned out and how every voice kind of complements each other. Yeah, definitely. And being that, you know, it's one thing to uh, sing, but it's another thing to, you know, there's lyrics that also have to be involved in the style and the sound as well. So have you always needed the music to come up with lyrics or has there ever been a time where maybe lyrics could help influence the direction of the sound? For me, it's always one thing kind of influences each other. I usually write songs on the keyboard and then like 
like, for example, I write a part and Dave comes in and he puts a part. And maybe I play around with some sounds and just kind of evolve an idea. And then whatever that idea kind of sounds like, it inspires, you know, the, the theme of the song. Or if I have an idea of what I, you know, sometimes I get an idea, like, I really want to make a song about this. And then the thought kind of inspires what the music will sound like. So for me, it's like, you know, one influences the other. I don't think I could ever, like, make a whole song and then figure out what it's going to be about. <laughs> it's like, I usually take it step by step. Or, you know, come up with a chorus and then the verses kind of um, evolve from there. So... Mm -hmm. And being that it starts off with keyboard, I know I was reading about you. You actually have a background in classical as well, right? Yeah, I grew up playing classical piano, and uh, I think that really helps me because when I hear an idea, I'm able to kind of put it into this, you know <laughs> into existence. Like for example, I have trouble with drums sometimes because I'm not a drummer, and then I hear a beat, but I have no idea. Like it drives me crazy. Like you know, putting samples together to make the beat sound like I, I hear it. So, um, you know, I'm really grateful I have this background because I am able to, um, you know, put it, that, you know, put the idea, you know, into the track, basically. Mm -hmm. And it, because obviously having a classical background is always helpful in this style, but do you almost feel like that maybe, you know, in the end, this is metal, this is rock, there's rebellion involved. Do you almost feel that maybe you kind of have to like, surrender a little bit of your classical background in in order to kind of make a song come to fruition I, I see what you're saying you know i never like approach anything with like oh i'm a classical pianist or whatever <laughs> i think eddie van halen said like you um learned it you forget it and that's kind of what i did i think i learned a lot and i practiced a lot and then um i mindset like I forgot it but I have all these tools I use so I just kind of go off emotion and go off when I want to you know, make the song and then the tools are kind of in the background like if I need it I I know how to do it but I never like think that way if yeah. that makes sense you're not enslaved to your training and it's it's almost like it's almost subconscious too just especially if you were classically trained at so young it's, it's just part of how you write now I, yeah, exactly. And I think like Dave and I, we kind of had to learn how to write too. And like Dave is very good at also leaving his guitar, you know, <laughs> tricks behind. Because he could play anything on the guitar, but sometimes the song needs very simple stuff. So he doesn't really get to show off a lot. You know, it shows like you can go off and solo a lot, but if you listen to our music, it doesn't like the, I think the really thing is that you don't your ear doesn't go to a particular instrument you just kind of hear the song as a whole and then you if you really listen in you can hear all the cool ideas and the riffs and the melodies but over everything kind of works together overall and i think that's what's really important for a band you know when you make a song everything has to go in the background and everything happens for the song mm -hmm. <laughs> And do you find it maybe easier to come up with new ideas when you're in the company of your bandmates, or do you prefer to maybe like write alone in isolation? You know, we never write together, <laughs> and you know it's funny because we had um, we had quite a few band members, um, you know, because we've been a band for almost ten years, and it's just natural as the band grows, you know, the more commitment, and you know you people kind of come and go and they all contribute something and it's really awesome to you know, work with a lot of different people but you know we had John in the band who was like let's you know, go in the rehearsal studio and we'll like jam and like make a song and I, like to us like to me it's a really foreign idea because I really need to be by myself like in a dark room or you know just me and the keyboard and the computer and like the studio and like just explore what the ideas take me and then um i when dave works on it i don't think i can be in the room because we kind of start fighting mm -hmm. i'm like no what are you doing like it's not supposed to be there you know so we work on the songs on our own and then once we kind of know where it's 
taking shape, then, you know, we talk about it, obviously. Um, but sometimes the best ideas come from, you know, if I make a song and then he hates it, then I get really upset. <laughs> and then I redo it and then it turns out really cool. Mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, isolation is always a great fuel for creativity anyway. So uh, it's really cool. Like, do you, when it comes to like your lyrics, going back to that again, do you write from a more personal point of view or like, do you kind of look outwards and kind of uh, take inspiration as it comes? Um, it's definitely more personal. It's almost like personal, but I take it to like another dimension in a way because I always write on like a, um, I guess otherworldly would be a good word. I, I like the grandiose kind of setting for this song. So the setting is like another planet, but what you experience on that planet is very personal. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's experience is always personal, no matter, like nobody could experience the same things. Yeah, and you know, with our music, we want people, like, you know, the themes of the songs might be like grandiose, but I think the feeling of the song is what's relatable to everybody because we, we all feel the same things. You know, we, we feel it in different ways, but, it, you know, the feeling is still the same in a way. So I think our songs are relatable in that way, uh, but I always want to kind of to suck people out of this reality and, and take them on a trip through our universe and, you know, kind of experience the journey of the song but in another world <laughs> so the final question i wanted to ask you is is when it comes to playing live uh is there maybe a similar energy that you put into your live presence as you do when you're songwriting or do you uh almost feel like playing live and songwriting are two completely separate arts um it's definitely a bit separate the the energy is there i think it's almost it's like when you record a song it's more like inwards energy and then when you play a show that in, inward energy is outward to the audience. So whatever I feel inside when I record a song, um, I share it with the audience, so it just becomes more external. And, um, you know, the obvious when you play the song live, it has a different sort of um, light to it, energy, and you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, and, you know, we, we definitely put emphasis on making sure we sound like the album, just even more uh, powerful. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So uh, before we go, I want to thank you so much for your time today. It's great to okay. have this conversation and finally uh, make an Edge of Paradise uh, interview happen. Everybody, Margarita of Edge of Paradise. This is Alex from Heavy New York. We will see you next time.